Hello and welcome to the first Quest System Pro tutorial. Um, in this tutorial we'll set up the managers and go over the editors so we can actually get started using the quests and dialogues. So first I'm going to create a new empty object. This object will contain the managers needed for Quest System Pro. So first off we have the quest manager. So if we just search for quest manager it'll show up. And the quest manager has a set of databases it uses to store a lot of information. So we can actually create these manually and link them as well, but we can actually just click these Generate and Link Databases button, which will do all the work for us. So if we go to our, if we click the button, we get the uh, Choose folder. This is where we actually want to save the databases. Um, don't save it inside the Quest System Pro folder because if there's an update, you might lose your files. So always uh, save all of your own assets outside of the Quest System Pro folder. something like that, and then select the folder. This will generate all the databases and link them up here. Now, first we have the language database. This consists of, uh, of a lot of messages that uh, you can show to the player when, um, for example, a quest cannot be completed or out of range, etc. Then there's the quest database. This will contain all of the quests and achievements. And finally, we have these settings where we can actually specify uh, the maximum amount of active quests we can have or um, the UI elements we would like to use to display the quests. So now that we have our manager's object, we can actually go to Tools, Quest System Pro, and then Main Editor. And this will show the, the main primary editor we can use to create quests. So let's go over our first quest. So when we click Create Quests, we get the quest button or actually type picker here we can choose different types of quests at this moment there's just one generic quest which can actually handle almost every situation but if you'd like you can create your own quest for uh, more flexibility so first when you have a quest we're just going to give this uh, a simple name like uh, gather quests gather some items we can set a, an icon if we'd like but for now I'll just leave it blank so we have autocomplete when tasks are done. So a quest can consist of multiple tasks, actually as many as you'd like. When all tasks are completed, should this quest automatically be completed or does the user have to go back to a specific place to actually complete the quest? Like go back to an NPC, talk to the NPC and then finish the quest. So in this case, I'll just go with the traditional RPG setup where the user has to go back. Then we have a task order. We have parallel and single. Parallel means that all tasks will be started at the same time and single means they will be started one after another. So if we have five tasks, for example, which is going to make two tasks. If we have two tasks and I set parallel, both tasks will start at the same time. If I specify a time limit, both tasks will actually start the time limit at the same time. If we do single, we first have to complete the first task and once that one is completed, the second timer will start. Um, for now, I'm just going to start with a single task, so it doesn't matter in this case. So for the key, the key is the unique specifiers. This has to be unique per task. So that's, I generally tend to use just main for the, uh, the first task and then whichever comes after. The key has to, be, has to be used to set the progress. So later when we want to, I don't know, pick up an item, we have to use the key to specify which task uh, we've progressed towards. Um, a simple description, a status message. The status message actually shows um, the current status of this task. So we actually have a couple of values we can use, um, which we can actually find on the website. So if I quickly go to the DevDog website and go to the documentation for the quest system, you can see that, let's see, um, creating a quest. So here's some documentation and here's all the uh, explanation of what, a, what every field does. So here, for example, we can see we have the status message. So um, if we put zero between brackets, we output the current progress, one for the normal progress, two for the normalized progress, and three for the progress cap. So um, for now, if we do captured zero and then two, two is the normalized value. So this will be zero and then a value from zero to one. Um, then we have the icon, which is specific to this task, the progress cap. This defines uh, how many times the task or the action has to be completed before the task is completed. So for example, if you have a quest um, 
gather some items and we have to gather five items. If we check autocomplete, the quest will automatically be completed as soon as we hit five items. If we do not autocomplete, uh, you can gather six, seven, eight more items. Um, a time limit, we can specify a time limit in seconds here. And then a requirement, um, whether the task is required or not. Um, if we set the task to required and the task is not completed within this time, it will actually be cancelled. Um, if we set it to optional, the task can actually be, um, the quest will actually continue and not be cancelled if we fail this task. We have give rewards on task complete, so we can actually use this um, when the task is completed. We directly give all the rewards that are associated with this task. If we do not do this, the task rewards will be given once the entire quest is completed. And here we can actually give rewards. So we have the reward givers. If we go here, we can say, for example, a task time reward giver. And here we can say, I have a task. So let's say I have another task. And we can specify here main two, and we add 10 seconds. So if these are parallel, we complete the first task the second task will actually get 10, 10 extra seconds to be completed. Um, in that case, we do actually have to check give rewards on task complete. So as soon as we finish the first task, the second one will um, get this as a reward. Then there's overachievements. And with overachievements, we can specify um, how much a user can overachieve to get a, a bigger reward. So for example, if we have collect five items, or gather five items. We can specify an overachievement. So with 1.5 means if the user does 150% um, of the effort, so if the user were to gather 7.5 items or more, um, we can give him extra rewards. And here we can give the same reward handles, handlers as, as the rest. Um, and we also have uh, on activation reward giver, so you can actually use this to give the player a reward as soon as he uh, starts the quest, um, which would be useful if you want to give him a specific quest item or a buff or something like that. Then there's reward givers. This, these are the rewards for the entire quest, so that's when all tasks are completed, and the entire task or the entire quest is completed, you will get these rewards. Um, when you finish the quest, you will get the quest rewards, but you also get all of the task rewards. Then there's the maximum repeat time. So if you set it to one, the quest can only be done once. If you set it to five, the quest can be repeated five times. Um, requires finished quests. So here you can specify if uh, another quest has to be completed before uh, the user is allowed to start this one. There's conditions. Uh, you can actually specify your own conditions. So maybe you want to specify um, if the player has the right level to start this quest. Um, you can add a condition here. Um, because Quest System Pro is kind of set up in an um, abstract way, you can add your own conditions here and tailor it to your own game. Um, I'll do some tutorials on this in uh, the next, uh, next tutorials. And finally, there's a time handler. And the time handler uh, specifies how the quest should handle timeouts. So if a task like this one with a time limit is not completed within the 300 seconds, um, the time handler can specify how, uh, how the quest should handle. So for example, fail the quest uh, when a task is out of time. And finally, there are um, achievements. And achievements are pretty much the same as a quest. The only difference is that an achievement automatically activates as soon as you set the progress on it. So a quest has to be activated manually. And an achievement, on the other hand, uh, automatically begins counting as soon as you do something. Um, and that's it for the uh, editors. In the next video tutorial, I'll go over setting up a quest um, owner so we can actually um, create an NPC that has some quests so we can actually start questing.